happening in the garage? Hey, you know, we've done a lot of repairs and, and, and rework to this car. Done a lot of things mostly on the exterior of the car just to make it look good. You know, wheels and tires and, you know, seals and struts and all kinds of stuff. Uh, now we're going to start work on the rear. Um, I figured that I'd leave the interior alone until, you know, I get good and ready to uh, maybe put the car back on the road. That way I can keep that interior as fresh as possible. So without further delay, let's get this thing up in the air and see what it takes to pull that motor out. All right, got all ready to, well, jack it up, take the motor out. But there's a few things I want to do first before I go and take the motor out. Now you got to remember, this car at one time was running. So you can see, well, it wasn't running well. You know, it did actually go down the road at one time or another. Uh, not too long ago, actually. So, um, you know, I think what I want to do is I want to run some tests on it because well, once I take it out, uh, all my data is gone. So I want to measure things like, uh, I don't know, fuel pressure, voltages, that kind of thing. It is running like hell. I do know that uh, I was given a discount of $500 on the car because the alternator shot. So uh, there's that. And so I want to run some tests, maybe with the engine off and with the engine on and see exactly what I'm getting for data before I take the engine out. Because you got to remember, once the engine comes out of this thing and it gets dropped out, all your information's gone as to how it ran previously. You really don't know if well, you made any repairs to fix anything. So let's go to the bench and I'll show you what tools I'm going to use for that. Okay, you can see I got here, I made a kind of a list of things I, I want to measure here. Uh, being voltage at the alternator, uh, like I said before. I think the alternator is bad. It's not putting out any, any current. Uh, grounding to the frame. You really want to check that before you pull any kind of engine out to see where it was before you started. Uh, both fuel pumps. There's a fuel pump in the front, fuel pump in the rear. Make sure they're still buzzing around and uh, you know there's voltage to those things. Uh, full fuel pressure at regulator. So basically what you want to do is I have this tool right here which is a fuel pressure gauge and uh, this is a little bit different than a lot of the CIS tools you use. However, this will uh, be able to be used on this um, mechanical fuel injection system without a problem. You know, it's got all kinds of little adapters and we'll be able to take the, the fittings there and make it happen. Uh, cold start pressure, warm pressure, and then what I want to do is get um, cylinder pressures. So what I'm going to have to do is of course take the spark plugs out one by one, you know, disconnect the distributor, and we'll turn it over and see what kind of uh, cylinder pressures we get. Look at the plugs at the same time, look at the engine oil and the gearbox oil, and that's pretty much all we can do. So, while the engine still runs, make these measurements. We're going to use a multimeter, fuel pressure gauge, should have all this information in a hurry. Also along with this, I have purchased this. This is specifically for a 1977 911SN930, 930 is a turbo. So this should have specific information on how, maybe how to to make the turbo uh, wire the boost gauge in and that kind of thing. But this is really great. The colors are really vivid. You know, it's laminated and uh, I'll provide the link at, at the bottom in the description. Okay, now you see after we started it, it's at like uh, 12.87 volts. It's kind of climbing. So that means, yeah, the alternator is not putting out any voltage at all. So it'll just be a matter of time before it, you know, drains the battery and starts running like crap. I know these CIS systems, they need to have a full running uh, fuel pump with full voltage. If you don't have that, then this really, this system really isn't uh, going to work really well. So I think what we'll do now is we'll take the intercooler off now and get in there and do some fuel pressure measurements. I can close the door now. I'm about gassed out from, uh, from all this oil in here. We'll have to figure out where that's coming from. But uh, overall, it's a pretty good test. Uh, verified, alternator's bad.
Um, all right. Well, look at all that oil. Looks like uh, this is the outlet of the turbo. I don't know, but that's quite a bit of oil there. Yeah, totally flat. Oh, let's take the AC out. Okay, now the next thing on our list is to check the fuel pressures. So what you have is you have an injection system and then it exits the fuels distributor and goes into the control pressure regulator or some people call that the warm-up regulator, it's right there. And so you take the outlet of that, outlet of the in, in between the fuel distributor and that and you put a pressure gauge here. So the first thing I want to check is a full flow pressure. So I want to close this valve here. And what that does is it basically just makes it so the fuel can't return back to the tank. And it pretty much deadheads the whole system. And uh, uh, turn the key on, we should be able to see what kind of pressure we get there. Yeah, you can see it's about uh, 80, 87, 88 pounds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up this valve and let, let the fuel flow back to the tank. And you can see that goes up to about 30 or about 2 bar. So this is uh, about, I don't know, 65, 70 degrees out here today. So we're going to check the chart for that. So now what we want to do is plug in the warm-up regulator. What that's going to do is it's going to heat up the heat up the element in here and increase the fuel pressure. So I plug that thing in and this thing should rise slowly. Check it here in about 10 minutes. Okay, you can see that's pretty much leveled off right now. So we have about 55 pounds or uh, about 3.7, 3.8 bar there. Okay, another thing, it's been about 10 minutes, and you can see it drop down, I don't know, probably about uh, uh, 1.75, 1.7 bar. Pull those plugs out, see what they look like. <laughs> All right, so this one, this one also is an NGK. And man, that looks like a really cold plug because the electro is way down inside of there. Okay, number two. All right, number three. Looks like that's a Bosch, same as number two. And it looks like a little bit of a hotter plug. Okay, this is also a Bosch. And this looks better than any of them. That's number four. Doesn't look too bad. It's also a Bosch plug. All right, and number six. And this one um, doesn't look too bad. All right, now that we got them all out, they look pretty good. 
Um, I'm gonna hook up a compression gauge, go one through six, and get some measurements on these cylinders. Really interested to find out what they are. All right, we'll start off with number six. Looks like about 140. Okay, this looks like it's a little bit lower. It's like uh, 132. All right, that one is about 129. Yes, I'm back over here on the driver's side now, and some of you might be wondering what this is. This is an aftermarket uh, boost timing master, and I have these on actually one of my other vehicles that's turboed aftermarket, and uh, that's not really connected to anything. Not sure why this is in there, because uh, those things should run standalone, but maybe, uh, maybe this thing has some type of electronics in there that's not really compatible with this, and somebody was dealing with some detonation. So definitely want to keep that in mind. The compression readings I'm seeing are low, which is good because turbos require low compression in order to, you know, not blow up the motor. So once again, not really sure why this is here, but let's work around it, keep it here, and uh, we'll pull it out, see what it's connected to, and uh, other than nothing, and let's take the rest of those measurements. All right, number three. All right, looks like about, about 130. I think this uh, timing, boost timing master thing, I think it was probably supposed to be plugged right into there because uh, this is connected to the manifold and I guarantee you this is gonna produce a vacuum leak. Um, this is after the sensor plate. So uh, yeah, this isn't going to be very good. I bet you this was just kind of crammed in there. And uh, well, that'll create a vacuum leak. That's not going to be good. All right, number two. Well, that is about 132. That took an hour and a half. I had to remove all this, this panel, electrical panel here. Okay, it looks about like 130 to me. So all these are basically within spec of each other. That's really great news. So now you get to removing all these, all these instruments that I'm using to measure things with the engine and uh, remove the rear bumper and sway bar and stuff underneath, and uh, that'll get this motor out of here. Kind of getting excited. So, not enough time to drop the engine today, but next time, we'll get into that.
subscribe if you haven't, and well, thanks for watching.